Hello and welcome to the offices of Limited Solutions. I'm Alan Bell and today I'm going to show you uh, this, which is a Novatech Infinity N1402 uh, Ultrabook. Um, it's a nice little thing, uh, very thin. They've been learning from some of the other manufacturers. Um, this, the, the Ultrabook form factor is very similar to uh, the the Dell Project Sputnik um, form factor and uh, other, other similar machines. Uh, I think Apple have the, the MacBook Air. And they've got this, um, up close. you can see that they've used the rounded edges which gives the illusion when it's, uh, when it's sat on a desk of being uh, thinner than it really is. But it really is quite thin. So ports around the side, we've got uh, power, uh, Ethernet, HDMI, uh, USB, and that's got a blue USB port. Um, I think that means it's a USB 3 port. Uh, that, I think, is audio. And there's no catch on the front, it just uh, closes nicely. Around the other side, we've got uh, SD card slot and two USB ports, uh, black USB ports and a VGA port, I think that's probably a Kensington lock. Uh, hinges feel nice. There's a little port at the back for uh, ventilation. The back side of it is pretty pretty clean. Uh, just a few stickers on it. And a pleasing lack of a window sticker. Um, because uh, Novatek are one of the few manufacturers that will sell you a computer without software. It's, it, you, you boot it up and it says, please give me an operating system, which is great. So I gave it an operating system. Um, I used a USB key to install Ubuntu on it. Um, I've installed the development version of Ubuntu because um, I wanted to. So we've got Ubuntu 13.04 Raring, uh, and I put a daily build on it. Um, I'm going to wipe it a few times and uh, probably settle on a more, a more stable uh, release or possibly carry on with rearing, who knows. Um, so we're booting into uh, Light DM. That was the boot up time, I don't know if you saw it there, it was pretty quick. And um, I'm running Unity on this at the moment as, as well as uh, GNOME Shell. So let me log in here and, um, and show you first uh, the, the Unity desktop. So here we are in, in the Unity desktop, and the uh, uh, can have a look at how quickly it opens the dash and searches for um, a text editor and launches the text editor. I can hit super and type in Firefox and launch that. Um, and you know it, it's quite snappy, switching between applications, um, switching workspaces and generally getting around. So if we have, have a look on uh, LSPCI and see what it's got in it. Um, we've got uh, an Intel processor, this is a Core i5 processor. Uh, the, we have Intel graphics, that's an HD 4000, it's pretty, pretty nippy. USB is an Intel, uh, lots of Intel things, audio, PCI bridges, USB again, ISA bridges, SATA controller is Intel. Now, down here we get to um, the network controller, and uh, the network controller is a, an R, a, a RAR link, um, and that one there, network controller RAR link corp device 3290. Uh, that's the, the Wi-Fi controller, and that took a bit of fiddling to get working. Um, we had to install um, firmware from the upstream uh, upstream kernel. It's, it's not yet available in Ubuntu, but there is a, a bug uh, around that, and I uh, expect it will be supported out of the box at some point, hopefully in, in rearing. Uh, the next device is the Bluetooth device, which I don't think I've got working yet. And the final one is the Gigabit Ethernet controller, which worked out of the box. The other thing that didn't work out of the box was the touchpad. It didn't do a thing. 
Um, so I plugged in a USB uh, wireless mouse and um, did a bit of Googling and found that you can change um, one line in the Grub configuration and then it just comes alive. I'll, I'll add some comments uh, down below on, on how to get around the touchpad issue and the links to the, the bug and details of how to get the Wi-Fi turned on. Uh, if you look at LSUSB, there's not an awful lot listed there. There's this one mysterious device, I think that might be the webcam. Uh, I'm just installing the Cheese webcam application, and you can see from the command line that didn't take very long. I should probably have done that from the software center. In fact, whilst I'm, whilst I'm at it, let's go and have a look at the software center. see how quickly that, because the software center is quite a slow application on uh, many computers. Did I click that? No, I didn't click that. Um, so that's the software center loading, and we'll install something through the software center when uh, Cheese finishes loading, or Cheese has finished loading. So, so if we look at the Cheese webcam booth, I just wanted to show you uh, the webcam. Come on. Webcam's not working. That totally was working before. The webcam works, but um, I'll, I'll get around to yeah. uh, fixing that with cheese later. So, in the Ubuntu Software Center, if we search for, let's say, the Chromium browser, uh, Chromium web browser, there it is, uh, and let's install it. password is just Libertus if you're watching the keys and trying to work it out. So this is downloading, setting up and installing Chromium. Uh, general build quality, you know, the thing doesn't wobble, it quite, feels quite solid. Um, one thing, because I'm really picky about these things, is that the power button isn't perfectly aligned in its slot, but um, overall it feels pretty pretty dense, pretty chunky, pretty solid. Well, not, not chunky, it's just sort of slim but solid. Um, keyboard is quite nice to type on. Right, Chromium's now installed, and because um, it's Unity, it's added it to the launcher down there. And there it is, it's up and running. You can get started. browse the web. Again, nice and fast. Uh, we've got the uh, two-finger multi-touch scrolling on the touchpad. Um, that's a nice little machine. For the dual monitors, um, I've plugged in uh, an extra monitor with the, through the HDMI port and it just works. You get a, an extended uh, screen by the side. Um, and that works in both Unity and Gnome Shell. It works slightly better in Gnome Shell, truth be told. Let's see uh, how quickly it shuts down. So uh, I've just asked it to shut that. Uh, let's, first, let's first close the lid, and um, that, that will now suspend. So you can see the little lights through there, and the fan is still buzzing. And has it gone yet? Yeah, still suspending. It takes a little while to suspend, but it hasn't failed to suspend on me yet. He says, with it not actually. Oh, there we go. It's gone, it's gone down. It's finished, finished suspending. So that's gone to sleep. So suspend works just by you know, close and go. And um, on opening the lid, it stays suspended until you hit the power button. And now it's uh, straight back up and asking for the password. And now it's back in and reconnecting to the wireless. So let's uh, hit the power button again, um, but this time I'll let it shut down. And it's back on the wireless now. And it's saying my 
document is blocking is closed, but I'm going to log out without saving or shut down without saving. And now the shutdown screen and it's gone. That's off. It's a lot quicker to turn off than it took to uh, go into suspend mode. So let's just have a look. One look at the boot time again. So one, two, three. Hitting the power button. I'm sure I can check on the timeline afterwards to see how, how many seconds it takes from from power. Um, just gone through the BIOS and we're booted. And it's still seeking the Wi-Fi. It's not the fastest Wi-Fi controller um, compared to uh, my other laptop. My other laptop is by the time I've logged in, it takes a few seconds longer, um, we're on the Wi-Fi. Still not there. Mm. So the wireless is a bit slow. Uh, Bluetooth, I haven't got, uh, got it working yet, but that might just be um, that I haven't found the particular function key to turn on the Bluetooth adapter. That's failed to connect to the wireless. It's going to try again. Um, but overall, one Novatech 1402, great little device. And Novatech have got a few devices that are in the same chassis as this, the same, um, the same lump of hardware. So there's the N1401, which has got slightly inferior graphics. Um, and it's got a Core i3 processor rather than a Core i5. Um, there's the 1412, which has got a different SSD and is almost indistinguishable. The 1410 comes with 8 gig of RAM as default. I actually put an extra 4 in this, so this has got 8 gig of RAM. Uh, the standard configuration is 4 gig. And they've got so the 1410 with 8 gig, and the 1411 with 8 gig, and a bigger SSD, and a Core i7, and a bit more money. So this one cost us, including the 4 gig of RAM and a rucksack to put it in, it cost 394.64 without VAT and 473.57 with VAT. So there you go, the 14. O2 from Novatech, all working with Ubuntu. Bye for now.